Millions of tons of coal, bluestone, Rosendale cement, bricks, and ice harvested from the Hudson moved out of Rondau. Waves of immigrants in the mid-19th century from Germany, Ireland, and other parts of Europe provided plenty of cheap labor. Jewish immigrants from Eastern Europe and Russia, Poles, Italians, and later Blacks from the South followed them. And they worked very hard. Their jobs were generally very dangerous. And there were almost no safety precautions taken, much less regulations. The city was noisy, crowded, and polluted. Ruthless, hardworking businessmen capitalized on the opportunities. The most successful was Thomas Cornell, who arrived in Rondout in 1837. He opened stores on the canal, represented steamboat captains, and got the contract for towing all the barges on the canal. He parlayed those investments into the largest fortune that Rondout has ever seen. He built the railroad, he built two banks in Rondout, he owned the ferry. Ten years after coming there in 1847, he established the Cornell Steamboat Company, which lasted until the 1950s. They owned the newspaper, the trolley company, they were in mining, they were, they were in everything. After Cornell's death in 1890, his son-in-law, Samuel Koikendal, took over. While serving in the Civil War, he had learned how to acquire and ship large quantities of supplies to the troops. So he comes back to Rondau from being a shopkeeper. He works for Cornell and he marries his daughter and ultimately becomes his heir. There were very few lives in Ulster County that were not touched by Samuel Decker Kirkendall. Kirkendall extended his railroad to Kingston Point, a peninsula that juts into the Hudson River at the mouth of the Rondau Creek. Passengers arriving by steamboat disembarked to take the U&D Railroad, which he owned, to a grand hotel in the Catskills, which he also owned. In 1897, Koikendall built an amusement park at Kingston Point as a place for working families to go on their day off. He himself enjoyed the private members-only toboggan slide built within walking distance of his mansion. He was generally disliked, but respected by everybody. And if you wanted a loan or a deal, if you wanted a job, he didn't look at your credentials, he looked in your odds. After Koikendall died in 1913, the Cornell Steamboat Company was taken over by his sons and slowly faded as a force on the Hudson. Rondout itself had lost its autonomy in 1872 when it became part of Kingston and the new city hall was built. But what most contributed to Rondout's decline was the closing of the canal which had struggled since the advent of the railroad in 1898. And you figure by 1900, all of the major industries that helped to establish Rondout as the third busiest port on the Hudson, they had closed. But it still had an active port because the Cornell Steamship Company was very active on the larger river too, so they didn't only rely on Kingston. There was still shipbuilding here. So Rondout was a thriving center still, though its reason for thriving was over and its death was already underway. In the 30s, you had the Mid-Hudson Bridge open, and soon after that, the Rip Van Winkle Bridge opened. So a lot of the reasons for Rondout is as a transportation hub, as the place where people had to go through in order to get to where they wanted to go on this side of the river. Diminished too, once the automobile took over. And then of course, by the time the throughway came in the 50s and the Rhinecliff Bridge, there was absolutely no reason for Rondout to be. People could interact with Kingston, never know that there was a Rondout. In 1954, IBM constructed a massive plant on the outskirts of Kingston, where it developed the main frame computer, manufactured electric typewriters, and built SAGE, the nation's first national air defense network. The economy of Ulster County boomed. Housing developments, strip malls, and supermarkets sprouted up in the country.